This is Five on Your Side at Noon, focused on you. Israeli warplanes continue to hammer the Gaza Strip neighborhood by neighborhood. The country retaliating for Hamas' surprise weekend attack. The war has already claimed more than 1,800 lives on both sides and is expected to escalate. Israel says Hamas and other militant groups in Gaza are holding more than 150 soldiers and civilians hostage. Thanks so much for being here at noon. I'm Kay Quinn. President Biden will address the nation at any moment on the war in Israel, and we will bring you an NBC News special report. The president expected to speak from the White House, and we're hoping to learn more about the 11 Americans killed in the conflict and those Americans being held hostage. President Biden is speaking on the war. We will go to NBC News in a moment. First, let's take a live look at Israel. Israel says its border with Gaza is now secure. NBC's Kelly Kobiea reports from Tel Aviv. Well, we are in a hospital lobby, the largest hospital in all of Israel here in central Tel Aviv, and this has been turned into a blood donation center. They were adding beds as we arrived. That's how large the outpouring is to donate blood. In fact, there's a line all the way down the hospital corridor of people waiting to donate. On the ground in Israel, the Israeli Defense Forces say there are amassing troops on the border with Gaza. They are continuing this counteroffensive in the air. Some 200 strikes on Islamic Jihad and Hamas positions inside Gaza. They say they hit two mosques, uh, one of which they say was a command center, the other uh, a place where weapons were being stored. But for civilians in Gaza, uh, the situation is increasingly dire. The United Nations says 187,000 people are now displaced. The vast majority of them are being cared for in shelters. Uh, there are nearly 800 dead now, among them more than 100 uh, children. There are images of children being pulled out of the rubble of buildings by uh, rescue workers and put into ambulances. And the UN also says that the, the, the hospitals are just barely functioning now, that they're running very low on medicine and on fuel used to power the generators to keep those hospitals running. Kelly Kobiea, NBC News, Tel Aviv. It has been a particularly scary few days for one Missouri church group. They were in the middle of a trip to the Holy Land when war broke out around them. Five on Your Side's Tracy Hinson has the story of how they got out of Israel and what they want international travelers to know. What started as a joyful pilgrimage to Israel turned into an urgent call for help. Had fired a bunch of missiles into Israel. It was early Saturday morning when the news hit home. At about one in the morning on uh, Saturday, one of the members, Kevin Darnell, uh, called. He missed it, but when he got back in touch, he heard what was happening. I know they heard sirens. Uh, I know there's a lot of um, a lot of concern. Flights were canceled. The group needed to get out. The size of that country, if it's um, 40 miles away, uh, you know, I think 40 miles is, is basically me and Lake St. Louis to, to the city of St. Louis. And um, that's about half the country. So um, it's you're very close to the fighting wherever you are there. Not knowing quite what to do, on a Sunday, he called a friend who got the group in touch with Senator Eric Schmidt's office. And the first time you call out to a U.S. senator, one of 100 people in the entire country, you, you don't expect immediate results. There was no lag. There was no lag. It wasn't make a call and five hours later you hear back. It was minutes between phone calls. It was just okay. absolutely amazing. Senator Schmidt's staff providing some much needed assurance for the group overseas and important help with paperwork. You actually have to ask the government to intercede in your benefit uh, when you're out of the country. You can't just assume that they're going to do anything. There, there's a law saying that the U.S. government cannot interfere with you unless you ask. I'm Tracy Hinson, five on your side. Between canceled flights and closed border crossings, the past 24 hours have been a scramble for members of Darden Prairie's Morning Star Church. They're in Jordan now. 
They hope they'll be stay safe there. The war between Israel and Hamas raising crude oil prices and sparking concern about how the war could impact the price of gas here in the U.S. While Israel isn't a major oil producer, ongoing tensions in the Middle East could rattle the global stock market. In the meantime, according to AAA, the average price for a gallon of regular gasoline in the U.S. has dropped. It's $3.70 a gallon. That's down about 11 cents from a week ago. And some economists say gasoline prices in this country should stay low for at least the next 60 days. Right now, the average price for a gallon of gas in Missouri, 32 cents below the national average. It's at $3.38 a gallon. In Illinois, the average price at the pump, $3.68 per gallon. Right now, we're following developing news of a road rage incident in Fenton near Bowles and I-44. Police say a shot was fired during the exchange. It happened around 8.15 this morning. Police confirmed the victim suffered a gunshot wound to the hand. The suspect is in custody. We'll continue to keep you posted as we find out more information. All right, so your weather first forecast is a bright one for the rest of this afternoon. That's for sure. Chilly start this morning, a lot of dew around the St. Louis area. But now that we have the sunshine, temperatures are starting to rebound nicely. A few of us were actually down into the 30s early this morning, especially away from town in town. We had temperatures in the 40s as we're looking across the region right now. Hardly a cloud in the sky across Missouri and Illinois. We've made it back to 66 degrees in St. Louis. That's a pretty good return so far. Temperature wise across the region, we're looking at those temperatures climbing into the 60s, especially since some of us were in the 30s. That is a huge jump as we have all that sunshine around the St. Louis area. It's actually turning out to be gorgeous this afternoon. Storms are possible though as we head into early tomorrow morning and more rain chances expected again on Friday. And since we're anticipating the president speaking here and the potential of a longer special report coming up, just want to give you a quick glimpse at the seven day forecast. We'll break this down more if we're given the opportunity a little bit later. But Kay, our best chances of rain first thing to tomorrow morning and then again during the day on Friday. It'll be much cooler once again for the weekend. All right, thank you, Scott. The St. Louis County Council will decide whether to pass two public safety bills, one involving teens, another involving guns. Five on your side's Mercedes McKay breaks down what's on the agenda. We are just hours away from the final votes on both of these bills. Now the focus of all of this is about public safety, specifically among the youngest in our community. The first bill on the agenda for final passage would make it illegal for those 16 or younger to purchase or carry a gun in public. It would also make it illegal to give or lend a gun to teens unless the adult is a parent or guardian. The other bill up for final vote tonight is about a new police department building. If passed, the measure would allow St. Louis County to continue leasing the site of the North County Precinct here on Benham Road for another six months. Just last November, county leaders broke ground on a new precinct near Christian Hospital on Dunn Road. It will be about 17,300 square feet, which is more than double the size of its current location. Both of these bills were introduced by District 4 Councilwoman Shalonda Webb, and they're both up for final passage tonight. That St. Louis County Council meeting is at 630. In North County, Mercedes McKay, five on your side. Also today, you'll get another opportunity to learn more about Manchester's annexation proposal. The city wants to expand its borders roughly around Manchester, Barrett Station, and Carmen Roads. Now the city's leaving it up to residents to decide if this should pass or fail. Two events will be held today at Mary's Shelter and Love Park. The first session is from 9 to 1030. That one has, of course, ended. There's an afternoon session from 4 to 630. Voters will cast their ballots on the annexation on Tuesday, November 7th. Coming up, what the city of St. Louis is doing to tackle the housing crisis. And a plan to create a new subdivision in Florissant moves forward. Up next, why some don't want to see it happen.